Hello world, it is the 3rd of December 2012 and I'm making this recording because we're all trying to know what's going on, what is going on. I think many of us are feeling it in our bones that something's going on and we're using things like YouTube because the media is useless to try and get to the truth and I think most of us feel when we when we f hear the truth we kind of know it okay but the thing is we don't know what's going to happen and we don't know when and I'm going to try and help us analyze all the different theories and come to the conclusion or get nearer to a conclusion of what is actually going on. Right, so when we look at all the possible theories of things that could be going on, you know, we've got things like Nibiru coming towards us, Planet X, we've got theories of the, the sun is going through some changes, and then there's this Mayan thing when all the planets line up with the the rift in the Milky Way is something going to happen then and um, then we've also got uh, on, a, let's, on a sort of more earthly based um, possibilities like evil human beings running the world and they just want to kill us all or even potentially aliens on this planet that would like to reduce our population and there's tons of stuff I mean this is a minefield of possibilities you know and what, what can you do with that <coughs> when, I, <coughs> when I go on YouTube and if I've got nothing specific to search I tend to just write Nibiru and then go to to display so that by upload date the newest ones and I flick through and you'll see if someone's put a tag on it like Nibiru well then there'll be all sorts of stuff in there but it's difficult knowing where to start unless you've heard something you want to look up and then tend to find by the time you've looked at one thing you see something else that interests you I mean it's great. I love absorbing all the knowledge. And obviously I only want to absorb true knowledge. As that's what I'm after. Some truth. For example, yesterday I spent nearly two hours probably uh, reading this transcript. What was supposed to be a, a meeting between a human and and a, an alien who's been living on this planet for longer than we have it's called Lacerta very interesting and um, I came to the conclusion at the end of it that it, that it was not true and the, the most difficult thing that I found coming to that conclusion was the fact that this woman journalist had made this statement to say this is absolutely the truth da, 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 da. now I think if someone did that today I think I'd believe them I think I'd believe they're telling the truth because I think today today you can you can understand that if if you make a statement that something is true and put it on the internet potentially a lot of people are going to see it and you're going to feel pretty guilty if in fact it's not true but this um, this journalist woman in Sweden who met this Lacerta the alien did this in 1999 and the year 2000 and if you remember the internet back then there were pretty few people on it and um, 
not very many websites. So I think back then, back then the world did seem very safe, even you know, as soon as the 1999 turned into 2000 and nothing happened, there was nothing going on in the world particularly. It all seemed very mundane and boring. And I was actually living in Norway at that time. And Swedish and Norwegian was quite similar. I even popped over to Sweden to buy some bits and bobs. And the people quite similar to the Norwegians and I could just see that they had this sort of yeah this potential to to do something like that because there was quite a bit of UFO interest as I recall anyway so to me I had to come to the conclusion that this isn't true and then I've got to kind of suspend all the information I heard in that interview because you're expecting it from an alien so you're expecting it to be information that you could couldn't get normally and you'd sort of trust it because it's from an alien who's more advanced than us so you know I have to put all that information that I got kind of suspend it there because also just if she had made it up doesn't mean that some of the things she said weren't actually true and she's also you know what a lot of what she says is is quite plausible and you you could see it but there were a few things that just weren't right and the, the main thing was that um, these advanced aliens that have been living among us all these years for millions of years apparently they're sort of hidden away underneath the ground but they love the sun so why are they they've obviously hidden underground to sort of stay away from us but they love the sun so much so why don't they come out in the sun more and if they're more advanced than us and they've colonized other planets what do they have to fear from us so in the end it just didn't add up but if you'd like to listen to it for yourself just search uh, Lacerta, L-A-C-E-R-T-A, on YouTube, and watch the video that's got ten parts, about ten minutes each, and you actually have to read. But it's quite easy, big writing, so. But I don't necessarily recommend it, because I think it's false. But, by all means, very interesting. Uh, listen to it, or read it, and make your own mind up. And there's, there's tons of other things, you know, you've got all sorts of people saying they're prophets. Uh, you've got this Thomas Deckard guy, he's saying he's a prophet, he's saying there's angels around us all the time. Um, what's he predicting? Well, I don't think he's predicting much, actually. Now, there are some prophets I do like, and if you search... Uh, GMS Israelites um, you'll see a, a lot of um, I think Negroes they're calling themselves now I think we're allowed to say that black people I prefer to say and they're um, on the streets in America Jamaica Canada and they're basically standing there prophesizing and they'll stand there all day and, you know, I've got a great deal of respect for them because they've given up um, all the bad things, given up smoking, they've given up drugs. Um, I'm sure they don't drink alcohol. They're, they're only eating um, proper foods, decent foods. They're avoiding pork. I'm not sure if they're avoiding beef. I'm not sure about that. But um, they're growing their beards. They're wearing a, a simple kind of um, clothing and they're prophesizing from the Bible. Now I think these guys are fantastic. I've listened to hours of, of their talks. Um, they're really, <laughs> they don't hold anything back at all. 
and I swear as much as anything. <coughs> uh, they have very strong views on um, women, and um, but their ma their main talk is the fact that God's kingdom is going to come back, and that uh, it's going to wipe out two thirds of even the Israelites save a third they're going to kill God is going to kill basically all the Edomites I think they call them or Asa which is basically white people um, so the, you know quite sort of severe really some of the stuff they do mention there is, is just so right and also because they're black uh, I hope this won't be taken as racist, but I think in in we've seen that when black people do something, it's, it is cool. Uh, you can't deny they look they look cool with their beards and <laughs> everything, and they're they're so sort of yeah they're so sort of strong in their in their stance that. Um, you know, give a lot of admiration for them when I and one of their things obviously uh, that I haven't mentioned yet is that they are the true Israelites now I think this is true and having read the Bible I'm sure I seem to remember Abraham being described as being black and I'm pretty sure Moses was too <laughs> But I'd never thought of it before. I'd never even considered that the Jews that we see today in Israel weren't the proper Jews. So I, I kind of, all the time when I heard that, I thought, well, okay, I can, I can go with this. I can see this. I've always felt something about black people that they seem to have this extra charm and. I've always liked black people, and it's not the first time I said that. I've been to Africa three times, and and I th think the black people there are really nice. They've got a lot of charisma, but I'm not sure. Apparently, according to the GMS Israelites, not all the black people in Africa or anything like that are uh, Israelites at, at all, apart from perhaps the Ethiopians. So these, uh, they're saying that they were the 12 tribes of Israel, when God basically kicked them out, which is in the, the end of the Old Testament, and he said, he's said he's going to punish them, and something, what's the word, iron, put your necks in iron, and there are all these things in the Bible, there is written out all these punishments, and it's weird, it's never occurred to me that, this would actually be the modern day black people in Jamaica and America. If that, that just, sorry to say, never occurred to me. And even, you know, of course I've heard about the slavery and everything. And even in my mind, I was sort of thinking it was, a, not say okay, but I didn't think of it as being, oh, that's absolutely terrible as I should have done because I think there's part of this conditioning in me the black people kind of don't matter as much which is terrible and I never openly consciously thought that even myself until I'd realized that I'd missed it that I'd known all about this slavery and what they'd done to them but that I'd never sort of associated that with a terrible terrible thing to do and I think that there is the proof that the original Israelites were black and when God kicked them out of their own country and said you're going to go off and be slaves you're going to go through you know, all this hardship um, but then that they would be restored and God will restore them. And I, I, th I th 
well, we'll so we'll have to see the proof of the pudding if they get restored. But I think that's enough for me to believe that um, that the black people are indeed the true Israelites, which means, and this is quite important, that the current Jews in Israel aren't. And like I just mentioned, God said he would also restore them eventually at some point. Now a lot of people must have thought that was going on in 1967 when some people from America and then Russia maybe came and claimed Israel as their as their country. <laughs> now when I when I was first thinking how could that be? How could they possibly not be the real Jews? I looked into this and Apparently what was going on uh, around the time that the, the real Jews were being kicked out of Israel um, there were these people from sort of Kazakhstan who came across the Jewish faith and took it on as their own. Now imagine the traditional clothing of a Jew you'd see in Israel today with the black hat and the massive sideburns and those straggly beards and the, and the suit, the sort of the suit that they wear. Very Russian y, isn't it? You can really imagine Kazakhstan sort of style there. Now, apparently, they never even claimed the, their home to be Jerusalem and Israel until about 1100. Now I guess by the time 1100 had come, it was a very, very long time ago when the Jews were kicked out of Israel. So people had forgotten who is entitled. So these people who took on the faith then started to claim that their natural place to be was in Israel. A fair play to them in a sense because they've obviously been persecuted over the years and they haven't denied their faith. They've kept on, so fair play to them on that. But I don't believe they're the original Jews. And you, there's proof that the original Jews were black in some parts of Ethiopia. I think not so many years ago they interviewed a tribe who basically never had contact with anyone else. And they were doing all the things that the commandments were in the Old Testament. That's how they were living. And they were living exactly the same way. And Ethiopia is very, very rich in, in that sort of religious, can I say regalia? I don't like that word. Um, I haven't been there myself. I'm itching to go now, though. I'd love to go there now. But uh, my brother's been there, he said, it, you know, Addis Ababa was amazing. You could just walk around in the streets in the middle of the night. It just felt so safe. And I've seen on TV pictures of some of their holy places and they, they really do look magnificent. And uh, they seem very rich with culture. Okay, so uh, that was a tangent. That wasn't how this started off. But I think quite important to put that in uh, your minds because it's the state of the world and remember when they went and took Israel in 1967 they were mainly from America weren't they uh, and, and Russia and you know if you look at Israel it's it's a kind of it's, a, it's an extension of America I mean it's yank land isn't it really I don't know how much Russian is involved there not much I would have thought but I don't know Someone mentioned that today, that Russia has a play in there, but um, it just seems like Yankland to me. And uh, they seem to be very keen on uh, showing their muscle to their neighbours. Right. <clears throat> on with what's going to happen and when. Now, we don't know. There's so many things that could happen, we're not sure things that may be within our control but doubtful 
I think if things had been in our control, things would have started to change already. Because there's enough people voicing their concerns about many aspects of what's going on in the world, and we just seem completely powerless to change them. Uh, you know, we don't want GM crops, everybody. They keep shoving them down our throats, don't they? The next thing I heard about is GM wheat, which could treble the harvests or something disease resistant this resistant but anyway if you eat um, if you just eat bread all the time which I've mentioned before then you just become stupid anyway so just you know don't worry about eating bread it's not got that much goodness it's just going to fill your belly you don't need to fill your belly you can shrink your belly if you just ate really really good foods let's say you ate a can of sardines every day you wouldn't die you have a small stomach you might be a bit skinny but I think you'd get everything you need and a bit of water right so what's going to happen and when I'm just wondering if there's any other little theories I'd like to uh, in the long grass no okay what I think is we can latch on to one of these theories one that we can all see one that we know therefore because we can see it is a fact and analyze why that's happening and then see if we can find out from that what is going to happen and the thing I want to focus on is chemtrails now I think at the moment 95% of the population is kind of indifferent about chemtrails or haven't even thought of it haven't even noticed it but chemtrails for me is what really gets my goat because because I'm seeing it every day so it's me every time I see it it makes me think along these lines and I don't like not knowing what's gonna happen now just for anyone who thinks oh chemtrails they're just you know stuff we've always had them and the reason there's more of them is because there's more planes flying over for you chemtrails are definitely a fact and they're definitely something being done by humans or by intelligent beings. Now, you will have seen a plane flying across the sky, I'm talking about high planes, you know, big passenger planes flying across the sky high up in the air, and you will probably have seen and can remember seeing a plane flying across the sky and making no cloud behind it at all. Now, now and again, you will see a plane flying across the sky and quite a short little tail of white is coming out behind the plane. And as the plane moves across the sky, the tail stays about the same length and dissipates. It's there really just for a few seconds and then it's gone. Now what we're seeing more and more of is a plane flies across the sky leaves a massive white line behind it and it's just a long line as far as you can see and it stays there and it might um, get wider and wider and spread out a bit yeah it might stay there it might spread out and become sort of a, a bit of a mist but it certainly doesn't go away it absolutely stays there now, I've also seen some that stop and start again. What that's all about is possibly trying to throw us off with these chemtrails, or maybe it's just a malfunction in the switch. Or, you know, whoever throws the switch, is the switch automatic? Is it done by the pilot? Is it done by someone away from the plane? That I don't know, and probably won't find out. But the fact is is that now 
most of the planes are making these long white lines. You get up, look at the sky, say early in the morning, for me that would be 8 o'clock, and it's a nice blue sky, and then here, there, and there, you see a plane going across, making a white streak. Before you know it, you've got a hazy sky. And for anyone living in the UK, and, and this is all over the world, it's happening all over the world. This is one key component of this. Australia, America, UK, China, everywhere. I haven't seen pictures from Africa because you know, maybe they're not, haven't got videos and internet and things as, as much as we have, so don't think I've seen any in Africa. I'm not sure about South America, but I'm sure they are. And um, apparently, I, this is what I've heard, I don't live in a big city, but apparently there's been a lot more focus of it over cities. So, now let's take this chemtrails is a fact. It's worldwide and no one is admitting it. If you have a look on YouTube, you'll see people who have contacted governments and you see the sort of replies they're getting is this is just due to aircraft okay so I suppose we're supposed to believe that um, if you then said to them well how come some aircraft do and some don't they would then say it's atmospheric conditions which is contrails that's what contrails is so they're sticking to that and they're not wavering. Now, it could be that they're doing something good, because they've got a good reason for it, but they can't tell us because of, <laughs> sounds ridiculous, security, no, that is ridiculous because we can all see it. So it would then have to be to avoid mass hysteria about whatever they're protecting us against. So, right. So say, say it is to prevent global warming. <laughs> so they're doing this to prevent global warming. Although I wouldn't prevent it that much because I'm pretty sure this is they're doing this much more over land and and not over over the sea. Although it's going to drift. Apparently these things can stay up for a long time and they'll drift. So maybe they're trying to shroud the whole world in these, but, but I'm not sure about that. I think I think they're doing it over land. Maybe I, maybe I need to check my facts, right? Maybe someone can check for me. But let's assume then, for the moment, that they, they're doing it over land. So that wouldn't he help fight global warming very much because sun shines on the oceans that absorbs most of the heat energy so that's a really efficient way to heat up the earth allowing the sun to shine on the ocean so does that rule out the fact that they're doing it for global warming no, because I, I think if they were they would just come out and say I mean there wouldn't be any really good reason to, to keep it s hidden this long and it is hidden you know, you try and really search for an answer, no one seems to know. Nobody knows. So I think it has to be something more sinister than fighting global warming. I mean, okay, so if they come out and say, well, we've done chemtrails, so we have to now admit global warming, <laughs> that's not going to cause chaos, is it? Most people think that anyway. I mean, we can see by the weather we're having. Now, are these chemtrails affecting the weather? I mean, I believe they seem to have cocked up our summers. Um, you know, it's in, the, in the middle of July, when you, you have a nice morning and it feels really hot, and then, to be honest, I, I, there was a few days this summer that I was quite relieved <laughs> that we did have chemtrails because, 
because they sort of end up creating this sort of hazy mist over the whole sky, they'd weaken the sun. And if you got to work and it's bloody hot, you don't, you kind of appreciate weakening the sun a bit. So it's possible. And then you've got this whole thing about riots. They know that you're more likely to get a riot when it's hot and sunny. So they're preventing riots. But I, I still think that by now something would have leaked. If that was the reason, and if you think this re the, the reason and the answer is the government are doing what they can to help, or even if it's not the government, the powers that be are kind of doing a good thing, then aren't they? It's not really sinister, they're not trying to kill people or anything like that. So I think if it was that, then we would have had some leak by now. So I'm going to rule that one out. They're not doing it to prevent global warming. And another thing is with that as well, it's not very eco-friendly, is it? So maybe they're figuring, well, we'll only have to do this for a few more years, we don't have to admit it, then we can get away with it. I still think it would have leaked out, because it's not that bad. And they should be public with it anyway. And it's not bloody eco-friendly. Now, another thing I thought maybe it was, was um, trying to poison the air that we breathe, to weaken our immune systems. Because aluminium, if you gets into your body, that's what metals do. Most, I think there must be some good metals. Zinc is a good one. Um, manganese, magnesium, I think they're good. Aluminium isn't. Aluminium is not good for anything. Um, and it will weaken your immune system taking it in. And so that's kind of one of my theories that that's what the chemtrails are for. To weaken our immune system as a population reduction system so that uh, they can launch some sort of disease and uh, rid themselves of 80% uh, of the population. Now kind of think that's very extreme. Occasionally I've noticed a nasty air. Nasty shit in the air. It was kind of my thoughts that these chemtrails were then drifting back down and then we'll start breathing them in. But then it doesn't make sense. Why bother flying them so high in the sky if eventually they want us to breathe them in? You know, and if they're doing it over land then wind comes and blows it somewhere else so it's not very controlled I just think if, if that's what they were aiming to do they could do it much more easily and more effective by putting um, stuff in the tap water and I also think the powers that be don't want to kill everyone unless they are some alien race but they just want to kill you know, the poor sods uh, and leave the rich, their rich pals alive. So I think for that sort of stuff, tap water would be much better. Why bother spraying these visible lines in the sky? Okay, so let's rule that one out. Um, now another one is all this stuff to do with harp, another theory. And the other day I thought of, you know, sometimes you see these chemtrails are actually in a grid. And I've been thinking a lot lately about, um, are we in this country free? I mean, we seem a lot freer than people in unfree countries that we 
think about North Korea or possibly even China you know in the U United Kingdom better off than um, the many it seems but I was thinking am I free I don't feel free um, I mean I have a son and that's <laughs> it's obviously kind of keeps me rooted to where he's going to school and everything and because I'm separated from his mother I can't really just take him with me if I wanted to sod off somewhere which you know I do <laughs> I don't really do want to sod off somewhere but I but I can't but even even if I didn't have a son you know I mean, can hardly say these days that the world is your oyster and even if even if you did all the right things and got a good job and had all this money yeah you'd be able to take you'd be able to go on visits here there and there for a couple of weeks here and a couple of weeks there fly here stay in nice hotels you know even if you had the, the freedom of money which in a sense in this society without money you're not really free I mean you say I could go and scavenge in the wilderness I mean in the United Kingdom there's hardly any wilderness national parks are mostly farmland so you're always going to have someone saying get off my land so no, we're not free. And I thought the the chemtrails when they crisscross was a very good symbolism of the the jail bars, <laughs> the bars that are indicating that we're not free, that we are in a kind of we are imprisoned in a way. And then that led me on to this sort of this harp thing when they're saying you know they can fire low frequencies at, at you and make you feel depressed and sad and this morning particularly I woke up not very happy and I kind of thought maybe it's these low frequency waves they're throwing around and um, let's put on some loud music and fought them off <laughs> I did feel better but I think more I was feeling down because I've been quite inactive the last few weeks so I think so I think that's more down to me and um, it was my idea that maybe the chemtrails are kind of penning in these or amplifying these low frequency waves and keeping them on so they're on all of us all the time but no, I don't, it's, it's too too far-fetched so I'm far away in so soon getting to to an interesting point here perhaps I'm not sure what other, other theories there are for why there may be chemtrails except one more that I'm um, about to mention and it, it's going to sound far-fetched and, and massive and um, yeah it's Nibiru Nibiru, Planet X, Elenin, the, uh, the Sun's twin star, if we're in a binary star system, are they masking the approach of Nibiru? Is that why? They really don't want us to know it's coming that would cause massive pandemonium if suddenly the population of the earth knew for sure that an entire solar system was coming our way a red dwarf star I think they call it with possibly five or seven planets orbiting it is going to come close to our sun on its sort of not so sure if it's an elliptical orbit but it's certainly an orbit where on one extreme the sun and the other star are very close together and then the other extreme they're very far apart and it certainly would be travelling a lot faster the nearer it is to our sun 
because our sun is a more massive entity and therefore draws the other entity towards it. So, what do you think of that? Is that why they're doing chemtrails? Is that why they are concentrated over cities? Um, predominantly over land and populated areas? I mean, I'll ask you this. When was the last time you saw a sunset with a clear sun? I don't think I've seen one. Not for a long time. And okay, the biggest argument against this is that astronomers would see it. Okay. The thing is, it's possibly coming almost from behind the sun. So at night time, when the sun's over the other side, you're looking in the wrong direction. And that's obviously the best time to see stars or planets when the sun is down. So it's coming sort of from behind the sun. Mind you, the Earth is travelling round, isn't it? What is it? It's coming from it's coming from underneath. So you need to be in the South Pole. We should still see it. I mean I guess there'd be a date for when it becomes visible. Well, depends. Got a clear sky, right? You need a clear sky. But astronomers have still got their telescopes on the ground. And the only telescopes, you've got telescopes in space, but you obviously need special permission to see through these. And you'd probably need to, you can't just wave it around and have a look at anything. You'd, you'd have to apply with a specific thing you wanted to look at, and they'd set up the telescope so it's facing in the right direction for you, and then you'd be have, have permission to see it if you're high up in the astronomers. So... The only astronomers will be ones, ones with telescopes on the ground. Now, presumably you've got astronomers in Australia and uh, South South America. I'm sure powers that be can't control all of them what they look at. And there's plenty of <laughs> sightings at Nibiru on the YouTube, but. But not a single one that I consider to be right. So it sounds far fetched. Uh, granted, you know, are they are they doing chemtrails to mask the possibility that anyone with a strong telescope? And it's been going on for quite a few years now, so. As far as I'm concerned, it's last since 2009. I'm sure there were chemtrails before that because I didn't really notice them. But I sort of noticed the, the effect that they're having on the weather in 2009. And that was my initial reaction that they're doing it to defend global warming. Uh, quite possibly, these chemtrails, someone thought of it and, oh, that will uh, that would be brilliant. Then we can... Um, reduce global warming a bit and um, and that's kind of what we can play that we're doing it for we can uh, weaken people's immune systems and infect the land with over much aluminium and then our friends that uh, who make all the seeds can make a aluminium resistant seed so that only we could we'd then control all the food brilliant this brilliant idea we can mask the uh, advance of Nibiru and um, Spend loads of money on aviation fuel. So, you know, it could have been a triple, quadruple uh, whammy for them. But let's stick to this thing, what we're trying to do. I'm not making it any easier, am I? <laughs> so I've kind of narrowed down to say that chemtrails are to mask the approach of Nibiru. If you... 
you if you ever get a good shot at the sun um, and you have within your possession some dark glass uh, because if you take a picture of the sun it's going to be too much white so you need to take a picture through some dark glass and uh, take a high resolution image and see what you can see but um, yeah I guess you know you'd be lucky I think personally to to see a sky with, with just sun and I don't know they seem to be quite picky about when these chemtrails are, I mean, you'll have the odd day when there are none. Now, why, why on one day can they just leave it? Would it be uh, atmospheric conditions? That they, yeah, it does seem very far fetched, I'll grind, but I'll, I'll make a couple more arguments for it. I remember. Oh yeah, I saw on uh, YouTube yesterday someone who was looking into the approach of Nibiru and uh, had noticed on, I think he had seen some sort of, yeah, some sort of NASA thing back in, back in the days, the 80s or something, and had seen this, um, a coordinates for the possible approach. Anyway, if you go onto Google Sky, Google's like Google Earth, but you can see the sky, and you tap in these coordinates, and it takes you to a region near the belt, or near Orion's belt. And that, that's, that's apparently the, supposed to be the direction coming, so we see Orion's belt in the winter quite, quite easily. Well, anyway, so, but there is this area which is blacked out in a rectangle you know I don't know it, where this is going because if I think with all these chemtrails if if they were doing it for this reason then it must be pretty close by now um, the intensity of the chemtrails seems to have increased and everything that's going on in the world strange weather um, strange effects on the Sun and these are also possible arguments towards the co the coming of Nibiru. Um, before I go there, I just no, there I'm okay to go there now. Yeah, I mean, I've been um, hearing some a really good theory just lately about the Earth is been growing over the last two hundred million years, and if you went back a billion years. The Earth, I think a billion years, the Earth was only 53% of the size it is now. And for some reason, something's been going on, but for some reason the Earth keeps having these growth spurts. And in fact, all the ocean floor is under 200 million years old. Some of it in the middle, only about 60 or 70 million years old. And... Um, we may well be due another growth spurt and the sun seems to be acting up I don't know if that's fact or something sort of feel and also the earth's distance from the sun has also increased over this time and if you if you this was on cliff cliff high's wujo and if you go back and have some recordings of the Earth's Earth year back a long time ago, there's some records of it being 330 days. And also in between then, other periods as well, like 350. So the Earth, the Earth is possibly getting bigger every now and then it grows. And if you, it's brilliant if you look at that on YouTube, Earth growing is fantastic. You really see how the continents all really did fit together. Because on a smaller Earth, they're more curved and they actually fit much, much better than if you just slid them across now, which is the current theory. Um, but if we're also getting further away from the sun, um, something else is going on. 
So maybe all this happens at the same time, and the and the sun sort of knocks out um, the planets a little bit further away, and they grow. Um, I won't go into the growing Earth thing now. That, I mean, that's that's brilliant, and there's um, a lot of things that that explains. If you were listening to. Um, and so maybe this, with this Nibiru coming round, I mean, apparently there's a lot of dust, a load of comets in the tail of it. Now, if this comes thing comes and whips round the sun and off it goes again, there's going to be a lot of debris that we go through. This could potentially do things to our solar system. So that could be the reason why when it pops around, it um, makes the Earth grow, or gives it extra extra mass, isn't it? Where do you get the extra mass from? Well, there's this solar system that pops around every so often. Some say 3,600 years. Maybe it is that often, I don't know. Um, I did look into this because I did hear some program saying that it was every 26 million years. I thought, right, well, that's sounds very long this this program is obviously it was one like a history channel thingy discovery whatever so they're obviously aiming not to panic anyone oh in about 10 million years this thing could come round again oh yeah i'm really gonna worry about that 10 million years <laughs> but if you look at other um, binary star systems there some there are some that um these suns orbit each other um, like very short time period a minute or an hour or something and um, there are some that are just a couple of days and there are some that are a few hundred thousand years and that's what it says on Wikipedia so I'm going to presume from that that there might be a few in between uh, couple of hours and hundred thousand years but probably not longer than hundreds of thousands of years I mean it the time it takes for them to spin around each other has mainly to do with how close they are and the, and the difference in their mass so I think two equal ones would go around faster than one that's I don't know, maybe that means... No, it's probably the distance, anyway. So let's presume there's going to be a few in between. If that's the extreme, a couple of hours and hundreds of thousands of years, nobody's mentioned 26 million years, that's just too long. If the stars were that far apart from each other, they would have circled, circumvented the galaxy quicker than that, surely. So, about 3,000 or 5,000 years... Sounds like a pretty normal time frame. And um, there's definitely a lot of evidence that it's been here before. A lot of evidence. And it, w it would explain many things. Um, and uh, it made me think that um, with this Earth expanding theory we've got a lot of water on our planet now as the, if the water's always been here and, and not frozen with an earth 53% of the size would say it was almost entirely covered with water wouldn't it right half the size of the planet the planet is currently two thirds water shrink the crust surface area 53% and it's going to be covered in water now that's possible because you saw um, you know, fish fossils in places like France and other places like on land there are fish fossils now I think the current example would be the fact that the continent was lower down and it's been pushed up well if you look at this earth growing thing you'd see that that's that's just not true the the continents as we see them today have always been 
where they are. So must be then that the it was just the fact that the water was at a higher level. The, the continents today aren't on aren't on skiddy plates sliding around the earth. That's just not true. If you took all the water off the earth, there would be a single crust going around the whole earth. It's got its fault lines, but it's all crust. They're not sliding around. They're not moving like that. The earth is growing. All the floor underneath the ocean is relatively new in comparison to the land parts. So the earth has expanded. So we find fish fossils in places like France because when the earth was smaller, we had some water on here, and so it covered more of the earth's surface, or at least in some periods. But I think um, what with the dinosaurs and them running around on land, as we know they were, and we know that they were able to, when there was a Pangaea, which there was when the earth was at its smallest point, all the continents were touching each other. Now, I don't know how much water there was on the earth then. Maybe there was a lot less. I'm imagining there was less. Now, how about this Nibiru pops round with its tail of frozen comets? Or maybe by the time they swung round the sun, they're not frozen anymore. They're globules of water. <laughs> and the planet picks them up as it passes through the tail. Now, if Nibiru's been coming round every 5,000 years, you're going to have... That's quite a lot of times, isn't it? It's going to have picked up some water. So maybe Nibiru doesn't actually have an effect of making the earth grow, but it's provided the water in the frozen debris comets come behind, because there's a heck of a lot of ice in the solar system. It's not a rare thing at all. H2O is very common, luckily. So, there we have the possibility of where we gained our water. Um, it might have an effect on the earth growing with all this extra mass, or there might be something else going on there that the sun is doing. Because one thing that puzzles me about this theory is why did it only start 200 million years ago? Why hadn't it happened for Earth's, all of Earth's history, 4 billion years? So I think I'm um, getting up to an hour of prattle here. Um, I don't seem to have made any major conclusion, but I've shared with you my logic as far as it goes. And to say that, I think Nibiru is number one on the likelihood of what chemtrails are for.